The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 23rd, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 is the number to call in on. If you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Now send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that little subject heading, please put radio show question. If you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a market that is mixed out here. The Dow is maybe about to go positive. It's just slightly negative off seven points. The S&P is up five. NASDAQ 100 is up 48. Russell's up one. Semis are up one. Trannies are off 59. Gold is off uh, five bucks. Silver's off 17 cents. Light sweet crude is down 63 pennies. Natural gas is up two pennies. 30 year treasury is up 23 ticks right now. The U.S. dollar index is back 278 pips as we speak. And uh, so uh, low leading the charge. Let's take look at who's leading the charge dollar wise the upside you got micro strategy six point move six percent move i should say 21 point move textainer group 44 percent and 15 bucks the upside nvidia is up nine and change broadcom's up six and change intuitive surgical about six bucks and the downside is o'reilly automotive they're the leader in the clubhouse down about 17 bucks about two percent revolution medicines down 42 percent must not be solving any kind of revolutions out there down nearly 12 buckaroonies fmc is down about nine 13 percent decker outdoor down six a little over one percent elevance health up one and a half percent to seven dollar move there but let's begin by take let's go see what's going on in the currency market why don't we do that so let's go flip over to our charts here get to these white background charts momentarily just get a feel for what's going on inside the u.s dollar index of course we're going to take a look at the components that make up 83 percent of that move and that's the euro the yen and the great british pound so in the case of the euro which is a 57.6 percent weighting you've got a nice td nine count bottom prices above its oscillator and change line we're trading above uh, friday's high we're trading above thursday's high the euro is telling you and i it wants to make that move to its td9 Count breakdown level. That's at 1.0673. If it does that, that's going to put uh, pressure to the downside inside the U.S. dollar index. In the case of the yen today, it will complete a, a TD9 count top as long as price closes above 149.75 today so don't know if it will do that but if it does we'll have a td9 count top that confirms today completes tomorrow there's already a road to indicator top that is still in place out here the two tops make it better nah not that i've found you just need a top that's about a 14 percent weighting by the way so if this moves lower that top out there that will go ahead and put strength into the u.s dollar index oh but weakness i should say into the u.s dollar index if we take a look at the great british pound great british pound doesn't really have a uh, bottom out here that doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. It means I don't have a bottom pattern. That doesn't mean it hasn't bottomed. What price is doing, trade above yesterday's high, Friday's high, that is, and Thursday's high. And that suggests that this wants to continue to move higher. Now, its price target would be its most recent highs where that bear sash candle 
uh, formed, and that was back on uh, what the uh, not October 11th, but that was on the 12th. But the October 11th high is the resistance point. That would be up at 1.233. So these three currencies are suggest well, at least two of the three. Not too sure just yet about the yen, but the euro and the pound are suggesting strength. That will put weakness inside the U.S. dollar index out there. Now, on the uh, weekly time frames out here, you've got TD9 count bottom in the euro, TD9 count bottom on the uh, pen, on the on the pound, and you've got a TD9 count top inside the uh, Japanese yen. So uh, we'll keep an eye on these uh, currency pairs because they certainly are going to have an impact on uh, – on uh, uh, equities as well as uh, metals markets out there. Let's go ahead and close out those charts. What do we want to take a look at uh, next? I'll tell you what we look at next. Let's take a look at the daily equity future contract. So we'll pull those up. That's not them, but they'll show up here momentarily. And here's the ES, the NQ, the Dow, and the Russell 2000. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, it already has a uh, buy the D point bottom pattern out here. And that formed back on October the 4th. That low is at 23.53. That low is still in place. That pattern is still in place as well. Now, if we were to get a bullish reversal candle today, that would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. In the case of the NQ, it has a TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom remains in place unless price closed below 14.586. Um, if you get a bullish reversal candle today, it doesn't, not that it doesn't mean anything, it doesn't confirm any kind of a pattern. It's not like it's a reconfirmation of the TD9 count. It just says the TD9 count held as a support level. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow is in wave number seven right now. Now, that needs a higher low. The earliest that that could confirm would be tomorrow. It also has a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that's been triggered. That says if we get a bullish reversal candle, that'll confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. In the, sake, in the case of the Russell 2000, the weak link out here, today is going to become bar number eight of a TD9 count. That says a TD9 count bottom can or should happen between today and Wednesday. This also has a wave number seven pattern that says tomorrow could form that, confirm that pattern that would need a higher low. And there's a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that's been triggered. And therefore, a bullish reversal candle would confirm a bottom there. So we want to keep an eye on those. Uh, those are the equity futures. But let's not stop there. Many people don't pay attention, but you should pay attention to the equity futures and are just simply taking a look at the indices. So what are the indices doing? Well, here are the cash indices, the primary cash indices, the Dow in the upper left. You'll notice in the case of the Dow, it's triggered a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. Bullish reversal candle confirms a bottom. It also has a buy the D point pattern that is in place as we speak right now. The S&P 500 also Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. In the case of the NDX 100 is just testing that TD9 count bottom, just like the equity future contract is. The Russell 2000 cash indice and bar number eight of a TD9 count should form a TD9 count bottom between today and Wednesday. Bullish reversal candle would also confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Take a look at the semiconductors, the socks out here. They've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. A bullish reversal candle would confirm a bottom there. Bar number seven forming today. Maybe this goes on to form a TD9 count uh, during this week. Don't know. In the case of the uh, Dow Jones Transports, they need a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Also in bar number seven today. So like the uh, semis, they could come back and form a TD9 count, let's say by Thursday, uh, Friday of this week here. We'll have to come back to that. NASDAQ Composite holding its TD9 count bottom. And in the case of the New York Stock Exchange, a bullish reversal candle, even though it chose a hammer right now, doesn't mean it will be like that at the end of the day, but a bullish reversal candle there would confirm a bottom as well. So there's your cash indices, your equity future contracts. We know what to be looking for at day's end. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. Let's look at Microsoft for Nancy, Bank of America for Duncan Steve, CBM and IBRX for Dan inside the Tiger stand. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, U.S. indices is mostly green. The uh, trannies are the ones that are the holdout as we speak right now. We're going to go take a look at some requests that have come in. Let's first start with Nancy's request. Wants to take a look at Microsoft. So what Microsoft has is a TD9 count top on its daily time frame. That TD9 count top uh, confirmed on October the uh, 13th out here. And what took place this morning is price pulled back and tested key support. That's the bottom of his profile, Nancy. That's at 324.66. So at this stage here, the call would have to be a consolidation with inside his profiles. With support at 324.66 and resistance up at 331.39. Uh, we're within. Uh, we're trading um, at the bottom of the weekly profile uh, for Microsoft. We closed just slightly below it last week. Uh, the uh, weekly, the monthly time frame, we're consolidating with inside that profile. Let's take a quick peek at the 30-minute time frame chart, see if we can give you some kind of ultra intraday signal. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So, Nancy, got a TD9 count and a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, we both know about this when we take a look at this chart. The TD9 count bottom was the first one to form. When it formed, price first got up to its oscillator and change line, as it should. Then was price was able to overcome that, got up to its next level of resistance. That was the bottom of its profile, 328.85. That's the number for you to keep an eye on. If price can close above on a 30-minute basis, 328.85, that's its signal that it should go target 331 to 333. That is the bearish structured profile of it. A move above 333, you're looking at 335.64. So, Nance, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for from Microsoft. If not, just let me know and we'll get that for you. Let's go on to our next request out here. This one from Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den as well. And Duncan wants to take a look at Bank of America. BAC is the ticker symbol. That's what we've got up on our uh, charts right now. And uh, BAC, what do we have here? So, Friday was a close below the bottom of its bullish structured profile out there. So, that's not a good scene. But we have that's going on right now is prices testing its swing point. That was a swing point that took place on October 6th. Now, that swing point 
generated volume on that day of 58 million shares. We've done 14 million shares in just under two hours of trading. So we'll just take 14 times three. That's going to get us to about 45. Though 45 is going against 58, let's say. So we're basically coming into that swing point with lighter volume, or it appears that we are. So if Bank of America can close above the high of that swing point, the high of the swing point is 26.23. You'll have a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. And, you know, the expression, you can't bust them down, you try to bust them up. Well, the problem with busting Bank of America to the upside out here uh, is that first you've got resistance at 26.38 or thereabouts, and then you've got real resistance at 26.98. So there's a potential you're going to get a rejection of a swing point on lighter volume that should at least lead to a rally. You've got your resistance points out here. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, Bank of America has a weekly TD9 count bottom. A new profile form last week. You have support at 25.87, resistance up at 29.44. It's slightly bullish in structure. Your center line is at 27.46. The monthly chart for Bank of America is not looking good. Why? It's below profile levels, bullish in structure. It's below last month's low out there. It's below what you, you know, I wouldn't use that as a swing point necessarily. Um, the swing point would really be this candle right here from October of 2022 out there. So we're below that. So on a monthly basis, for all intents and purposes, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern out here for Bank of America. And that would look something like this. We'll just simply, to give you a quick feel for where that price target might be, let's just move this over, the A to B point to right there. And that says that we could easily get down into the $17 range out there. Now, that's longer term. Intermediate, you've got the TD9 count bottom. That remains a bottom until it fails out there. But watch that daily right now from an intraday standpoint. Intra, a shorter term time frame is really what I should say out there. Steve, oh, if you stay with inside that swing point, then you don't have any kind of test and rejection. You might be in that swing point with lighter volume, but it would not be a rejection. So, Steve, well, now on an intraday basis, just like we did with Nancy, if we take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart, this just generated as we came on the uh, air at 11 o'clock, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It was that bullish engulfing candle. Now, there's a new profile that has formed. And so that was above price. It tells us about overhead supply. That doesn't mean that price can't overtake it, but it's got some issues right at the, uh, which is about where it's trading into right now, uh, which is at the uh, level of, uh, where's that profile? 26.22. We're trading at 26.18, actually. Um, uh, so watch that level. Price can close about 26.22 on a 30 minute time frame. Then what you're looking at, Duncan, is moved to 26.35 or 26.42. So that's Bank of America, 30 minute, daily, weekly, and the monthly time frame. Hope that provides you with the information you were looking for as well. Dan inside the Tigers Den wants to take a look at CVM out here. So let's pull that up. CVM, I think he said was a high flyer. Well, it's flying high today and it's confirming a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. This is sell Psi Corp out here. Nice big uh, bar trade right now at about a buck thirty-three. Uh, Dan, what it's doing here, and I don't know why I don't have, I don't know why my system is not picking this up. Let me try it refresh all. We load all historical data. I show this today getting up to 151. You show the same thing, Dan? Uh, it's not showing up on this chart, so that's a bummer. I'd have to go check the setting somehow for CVM. But here's what I do know is that uh, you've got a nice uh, bull sash candle, no matter how I look at this, and that is confirming a bottom. That's just reconfirming. No, that's not reconfirming anything. Um, let's see here. On Friday, this actually this negated a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. But now you're getting a, a second one. The reason why I was asking about that 152 level is because you've got that TD9 count breakdown resistance at 144. And we're trading above profile. The top of that profile is 127. So this is what I say, Dano. Uh, price is going to go tag and retarget that 144 level. If you close above that, this is head up to 175. That's based upon the daily time frame chart. Let's take a look at the other time frames out here. Yeah, 151. So I don't know why this isn't picking up. It's luckily, Steve has got two sets of eyes out there and uh, two screens that we're taking a look at on a weekly time frame. This would confirm a Rhodes, a second Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. And the monthly is not really helping us out a whole lot. So on a weekly time frame, what we do know is a buck sixty-five is the next resistance level. And I know you're eyeing that because if price can close above that, 
What Dan knows, what you know, what I know, is when you have a bullish structured profile and you close above the center of that, odds favor you're going to make a move all the way up to the top. So talk about high flying. You're trading at 134 right now and 280 could easily be the price target, even 299 out there. 144 is the next major battle out there and best of luck to you on that. You've got some nice volume today. I don't know what they say, but they're already at about 3 million shares. To give you an example, and if I pick out another high volume day, it would be October 6, 500,000 shares. So this is moving. And this is, oops, sorry about that, folks, and grooving up there. Uh, so that's CVM. Uh, Dan had, shoot, why did that work? There we go. Uh, Dan had a second request. That was a take look at IBRX. So let's pull those charts up here, get a feel for what they are doing. IBRX. Now, this chart doesn't look as grand as it uh, as the uh, prior one that we looked at, but still having a heck of a day out there. Um, this time, I'm picking up the actual signals. Now, it's got big volume, 5.8 million shares. Just to give you an example, if I look at another high volume day, it would be September 29th, 3.5 million shares. So we're only two hours into trading out here, and this thing's got some volume. Now, what is it doing? On a daily basis, do I have any kind of bottom signal out there? And the answer is, um, I do not. Yeah, I don't have a bottom signal. What I have is prices below resistance or support, and that's the bottom of its profile, 144 out there. Yeah, it spiked up all the way to the center of that profile, but this is a bullish structured, bullish structured daily profile, Dan. 162 is where counter trend moves would end. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We come back from this break. We're going to finish looking at Immunity Bio Inc. IBRX. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts. 
while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a ticker symbol IBRX. That is immunity bio out here. And, uh, you know, I don't have any kind of a bottom signal uh, that we can take a look at. We've got price pulling back to prior swing points. In fact, if you look at the weekly chart, you go back to March uh, 17th of uh, 2023 out there. Volume, about 30 million shares. We've been trading in there for a while on a weekly basis. We've been trading in with 8 million Last week was with 5.7 million. So it looks like the sellers have run out here. That's about the best that I can come up with for you, Dan. Looks like the sellers are uh, decreasing, but the real key here is gonna be that 162 level. You really wanna see two consecutive closes above that to suggest to move up to 185 out there. So thank you for those requests. Let's go on to our next request. This is coming in from a night tram. Who wants to take a look at WEAT, which would be one way to play uh, wheat, and that would be the long way to play uh, wheat. That's an ETF, folks, that if you are gonna trade wheat, you need to know what's inside it. WAT has got the March 2024 contract. It's got the uh, May 2024 contract and the December 2024 contract out there. That's very important to know. And it's about a third, a third, a third. It's not exactly a third, but you can go to the Tecrium website and you can find out exactly what those percentage holdings are. Now, in the case of the March 2024 contract, really, quite frankly, in case of all of them, December may be being the exception today. Uh, what you have is nothing more than a good consolidation with inside its profile levels out there. And so in the case of the March 2024 contract, you're looking for price for two days to close above 618.33. And as far as the May 2024 contract, two consecutive close above 635.30 out there. And when it comes to December of 2024, we're looking at two consecutive closes above 673.90. That's what you need to see in order for wheat, because that would then, you would be trading above resistance, and that would then give uh, WEAT the emphasis that it needs with those three contracts moving higher out there. So uh, make sure that you're paying attention to the proper uh, contracts here for WEAT. I'm certain that you are, but I want to make sure everybody else that's listening in is really doing the same. Because right now, the active contract in wheat is December. December of 2024, and that's what most people would take a look at. But December of 2024, well, what's December of 2024 wheat's contract doing? You know, that's a great question. We can probably go take a look at it. Eh, not, not doing anything more than what I've just shared. I went to a different screen. Not doing anything more than that. So watch those uh, profile resistance levels. Right now, we're just simply going to call it uh, price trading within support and resistance out there. Uh, so Nitram, I hope that that helps you out. Let's go on to our next request coming in from Coda inside the Tiger's Den. And Coda wants to take a look at that Tesla. And uh, we'll get there momentarily. If you give me a moment here, we'll get back to that uh, screen. That set of screens, we'll take a look at the daily, the weekly, the monthly out there, and even a 30-minute uh, chart. If we take a look at uh, Tesla out here, Tesla is going to form bar number eight of a TD nine count pattern today. So let's open up this chart. You've got a TD nine count. I'm sorry, you've got an A to B equal CD pattern as well, but that would finish at much lower price. When you say much lower price, what do you mean, Stevie? Well, let's just draw on the A to B point out there. Notice how I made that line really dark and really thick, just to make it a little bit easier for each of you that are watching in the shows to be able to pick up uh, the pattern out there. Now I'm going to move this. I'm going to try to move this. I worked on this all weekend long, just simply moving that uh, A to B line out there. And here you can see that the A to B, the one-to-one -one price projection, is around 191 and change out there. But price doesn't have to get down there in order to bottom. You just need a TD9 count bottom to form. And that could take place between today and Wednesday. Now, it's really about tomorrow's bar that's going to be important. 90% of the time when bar 8 is a successful bar, meaning the higher low of the pattern, it goes on to complete that pattern. Well, if you take a look at the close of bar number 5, it's so far up there, it's above 230-something, or the actual close tomorrow. So price would have to close below 242.68. 
That seems like a likely outcome. Never know, though. Uh, so uh, Tesla's got an A to B equal CD. You need a bullish reversal candle and lower price. But a TD9 count bottom on the daily basis may form as well. Let's take a look at what's going on on a weekly time frame for Tesla. Not much. Uh, price uh, ran into a uh, prior swing point that had 556,000 shares, and last week was 616. Did it close below that level? Yeah, let's see. The low was 212.36. The close was 211.99. So this is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside on a weekly time frame out there. Hmm, something to think about. Now, let's see. That's probably, but let's just make sure, that's probably the same A to B equals CD price projection level. Let's just make sure of that. Again, we'll just simply move that over here. And yeah, sure enough, it is. So you've got both the weekly and the daily A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. But still be paying, still pay attention to the daily time frame chart because that, in fact, may take over. If we get a confirmed bottom out there, price should bounce up towards that 238 level. The monthly chart, you're inside the profile. So once you're inside there, well, you could go explore further and further to the downside, be 165. We're not giving that the call as we speak right now. From an intraday standpoint, you know, we've seen a little bit of a turnaround in the markets. If we take a look at some of these high-flying stocks out there, the Magnificent 7, you'll see we've already taken a look at a couple of them, I believe. We look at Microsoft. Well, you we take a look at Tesla on a 30-minute basis. Uh, this confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. That's where price stretches itself to one side or the other. In this case, it was stretched to the downside, and then it gets confirmed with a bullish reversal candle. It took place at 10.30 this morning. Your inside is profile. Looks to me like Tesla wants to go target 218.88. Now, if Tesla can close above 218.88 on a 30-minute basis and do it two times in a row, 245.28 would become the target. But you've got that big gap down that you need to contend with as well. So Tesla, um, that's what I see when I take a look at those charts. Code, I hope that that helps you out. You were looking for signals. Those are the signals. You'd like some more signals when we take a look at Palantir. PLTR is the uh, ticker symbol out here. Palantir would uh, generate a buy the D point, a Gartley buy pattern if it formed a bullish reversal candle today. As we speak at 1136, it's a bullish hammer candle. No, So what you'd really like if you're trying to get in this position or you're in this position, you'd really like trading to stop right now. You want them to halt trading inside of Palantir. That way you know you've got a bullish reversal candle and a buy the D point or a Gartley buy pattern. If you don't get that, well, that's what it's waiting for. It's waiting for a bullish reversal candle. Otherwise, it continues to head lower. Now, head lower to where? Head lower to be 1423, the bottom of its weekly profile out there. Now, interestingly enough, we're seeing this across the board here with regard to these 30-minute charts, at least every one that I've been pulling over for each of you. Palantir forms a bullish reversal candle at 1030 and confirms a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It's with inside its profile. It is trading above its oscillator and change line. So it's going to go target that sell zone. Yes, on a 30-minute basis, what we've got for Palantir is a sell zone between 1617 and 1629. If price closes over that 1629 level, you can see it move up to 1728. So, Coda, those are the signals. We take a look at Palantir out there. I hope that provided you with what you were looking for. And then finally, Coda's last request out there is to take a look at the XLY. So as we pull up the uh, XLY charts out here, we'll see that uh, you've got wave number seven bottom. That needs a higher low tomorrow. So the consumer discretionary sector could form a seventh wave bottom. There's an A to B equals CD to the downside. That needs at least a bullish reversal candle, quite frankly, lower price. I can just visually see that. Uh, bar number seven today. But you've already got a bottom signal. That is wave number seven out here. Um, the other area that uh, you've got support at 148.58, uh, again, this on the consumer discretionary sec uh, uh, sector, that is its TD9 count breakout area. That's its support level. That's where price broke out from most recently. On a monthly basis, you're trading with inside the profile levels there. And on a weekly basis, you're trading below profile support. Weekly, longer term, the discretionary sector coda could be signaling to you and I once to get back to 144.04. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Uh, thanks so much for the request. As always, makes the show so much easier for Stevie to do. Dow's up 17 points. S&P 14, NASDAQ 92. Russell's up 5. Semis are up 14. Gold's off 6. Silver's down 23 cents. GDX is only down uh, 6 pennies out there, so acting pretty strong. We're taking a look at the charts here for Apple. We take a look at the Apple chart. What we can see is that price is pulled back on a daily basis to a CD9 count breakout level of support. That's 170.82, and that level has held. When you pull back to a breakout level, it can be a bottom. There's no other bottom signal, but it can be a bottom. If that level fails, um, there's a swing point that would trade into from the trading day of uh, September 28th. There's volume there of 56 million shares. The reason why that's important to watch that is because there's a larger A to B equal CD to the downside. Wouldn't complete until we get into the 163 type area. But on a daily basis, what we know about Apple out here, this is for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den, is on a daily basis, Apple pit TD9 count breakout support, 170.82. The weekly chart? Doing the same thing. It's tested this uh, breakout level, 170.42. This will be the second time. And it's back inside that uh, bullish structured uh, weekly profile out there. So this, too, could be a bottom with regard to Apple. And on a monthly basis, Apple is trading above the top of its uh, profile. So that is a bullish signal. Now, what we don't have, this is the first chart on a 30-minute basis that we pulled over here where we don't have any kind of a bottom signal. We just don't. What we do have is a uh, profile that is trading into, and a sell zone out there for Apple is 173.50 to 173.94. So I'd watch those areas, G-Man, if price is able to overcome that, that would be a short-term bullish outcome. What else do we know about Apple? Apple needs a relief rally. It needs a plop, plop, fizz, fizz, and it's ready for the fizz, fizz. Why is that? Because Apple scored six consecutive down sessions in a row. I don't know how far back we have to go to see six consecutive down sessions inside of Apple. We got to go back pretty far. 
in any event out there, it's just a simple, it's just due for a relief rally out there. And that's what we see taking place inside of uh, Apple as we speak. So watch that short-term time frame chart for some further signals whether or not Apple is going to rally uh, further out there. If it does rally further, that's a signal. Watch 174.90-ish. That's its daily oscillator and change line. So hope that helps you out. Let's go take a look at POWW. POWW is for Snowball inside the Tiger's Den. POWW, give me a second here. I thought I put that up. Here we go. POWW, which is uh, Ammo Inc. Ah, pow, baby. Well, if we take a look at Ammo Inc., Ammo Inc. formed a TD9 count top about three days ago. Well, completed the pattern two days ago. What should happen here, Snowball, is price should pull back to test support. That first level of support is going to be that oscillator and change line. That's at $2.47 out there. Price gets below that. The next area of support is $2.42. If price gets below there, it has support in the range of $2.23 to $2.29 because that's its bullish structured profile level. Then finally, pow, would have ultimate support at two bucks that's where it last broke out from i am not at all suggesting that's where price is getting back to why because on a weekly basis price is above resistance it has been above resistance like this weekly profiles for quite some time so last week close above 237 is a bullish outcome now you want to see price close this week above 237 as well otherwise last week would be a false breakout style type move out there where should price head to well that's a great question because we're above profile levels out here there is an a to b equal cd pattern that we can draw in so let's draw this in here a to b would be look like this we're just simply going to go ahead and now that that swing point also the volume there which was june 16th 9.3 million shares last week 5.7 nonetheless you still have an a to b equals cd to the upside that one-to-one -one price projection out here looks like it's about uh in the 289 ish type level out there uh so first, it looks like what uh, Ammo wants to do <clears throat> is pull back and test 247. If that holds, that's the bullish outcome that you're looking for, Snowball. And that would then resume and suggest to move up towards that $3 area. It's A to B equals CD price projection level from its weekly time frame chart. So that provided you with the information you were looking for as well. Our next request coming in from Nicholas who wants to take a look at Google. He bought a uh, nice call position this morning, so good for you. If you got a bullish reversal candle today, you would generate, or this would generate, a Gartley buy pattern. What do you mean, Stevie? Well, it had a TD9 count top out there. We can each see that. Let's draw on the A to B point out here, and let's just move that A to B over to the C point. Now, the reality is, is that it looks like that retracement is so close to that. It's hard for me to really call that an A to B equals CD. And it was more than a 0.786 retracement out there. So let's just take a look at Google. What does uh, Nicholas need to be watching for? Well, the first thing is the battle. And that battle is going to be at the, uh, well, maybe it's undergoing that battle right now, which is the bottom of its daily profile. On the bottom of that profile, Nicholas is up at the, uh, yeah, it has tested at 137.91. So 137.91 is uh, that battle. If price can uh, close above that, then you're back inside the profile. It says that Friday's close below was a false move to the downside. And then we could likely see price get back up to 139.69. Uh, that's the, the center of this profile and about where the oscillator and change line would be if, in fact, price wants to move up there. So first, watch that profile level. That's your first area of resistance on this nice trade that you've got, 137.91. On a weekly basis, everything looks uh, pretty good. Uh, I say it looks pretty good, except that it formed a sell the D point pattern. So maybe not so good. It's got a sell pattern with price consolidating with inside its profile. That ranges from 128.29, that's at the support level, 138.64 as resistance. TD9 count top is potential uh, to form within the next few months out there. You're in bar number eight right now, but you've got to really wait. You know, we're, we're talking um, another five to nine-ish weeks out there, 10 weeks before we get that confirmation. So on a daily basis, TD9 count top, Price closing below the bottom of that daily profile on Friday. You want to see it get back in there. That's 137.91. If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart for you for Google, let's see what it uh, provided us. At the open this morning, price moved lower. It generated a wave number C bottom, a wave number G bottom. That's wave seven. It also confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now, its level of resistance, its battleground is 138.02. You get two 30-minute closes above that. 140.53 would be the uh, price target for Google for its 30-minute time frame. So, Nicholas, as always, thanks so much for writing in, and you have a uh, marvelous Monday. We've got a request from Joe. He wants to take this question is where's the next?
next high in TQQQ. So we pulled up the TQQQ charts, but the answer is I don't have a clue. The reason I don't have a clue is I wouldn't look at TQQQ to figure out where the next high is. What I would do is I'd use the underlying instrument here, Joe, and that would definitely be the NQ. But to give you an idea, where is it that TQQQ could head to? If, in fact, you're going to see a rally up, and if I just use these charts, I would say 3606-ish is an area. This has got a TD9 count bottom, just like the NQ does out there. And so price should then target, that, that level was tested rejected this morning, price should target that oscillator and change line, 3606. That's a resistance level. If price can overcome that, your next resistance would be 3667. And then the ultimate battle would be at 3779. That's the center of its bullish structured profile that price closed below for more than two consecutive sessions. We're going to move away from these charts and just simply go to take a look at those NQ charts. Now, on that daily time frame, you're definitely watching the bottom of that TD9 count out there. And so if you see a close below 14,586, you don't want to be in TQQQ. You want to be in the SQQQ or something along those lines. Five hour time frame chart. Yeah. Yeah, maybe an A to B equals C to the downside. The big pattern is on the four hour chart. The four hour chart's got a nice TD9 count bottom. That suggests a move to 14,790.50 and above that, 14887. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking like, our last two requests coming from Hector and Patty. They want to take a look at uh, Franco Nevada, Newmont Mining, FNV is the first one. And the question is, uh, what are the price targets out here? So what we know about uh, uh, Franco Nevada, uh, Hector and Patty, is you've got a nice TD9 count top, a profile formed uh, a couple of days ago. You've got support at 134.73, resistance at 141.73. Now that TD9 count top took price right back to its oscillator and change line. It has so far tested and rejected that level. We won't know until the end of the day. That's at 136.71 right now. So I'd have to say your next price target is where price is traded into. That's the center of its profile. The center of this profile is up at the 139.10 area. If price can close above that, you're getting to head back to 141.73, maybe even one. 4302 out there to the downside you're watching 134.73 or 129.88 but right now it's more of a bullish even though you got the td9 count because price tested and rejected that red oscillator and change line now the weekly time frame chart says you've got a battle up at its uh, oscillator and change line that's currently printed 139.50 out there let's take a quick peek in at uh, newmont mining nem is a ticker symbol out here this also has a td9 count top now in the case of newmont it's trading below that red oscillator and change line so you really want to see this get above that level that's at 38 even steven uh it's also trading just below the bottom of its daily profile 38.64 so you want to see it be able to get above that as well if it doesn't get above that we're looking more at downside potential than we are upside potential. And to the downside, 36.46 would be the number. Uh, so if you can close above, get back inside that daily profile, that would require a move to get above 38.64. Then you can move up to 39.62 or 39.99 out there. So Hector and Patty, thanks so much for writing in. Hope we got to the information you were looking for. And thank you to each of you out there, all of you inside the den for providing me with some direction of where to head to. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll see you tomorrow on Magnificent Monday. Be back with Tom at about 3.15. Have a great day, folks. Take care.